Hey there, it's been a while for a real video. Um, a while ago we did some partial differential equations using the Assimilo package to basically transform the, the partial differential equation into a system of differential equations. And we investigated how to do that just using loops uh, and brute, brute forcing the process. And also in a separate video we looked at uh, building the same system with sparse matrices. And we found that with the sparse matrices, it took up a lot less memory and we were able to do the calculation much faster. However, I made this statement that a Similo cannot handle sparse Jacobians. And while the, the simulation did run faster uh, with modeling the system of equations with sparse matrices, without the equivalent sparse Jacobians, uh, we don't get the same speed up you would get in other numerical packages. And after digging around for a while, I found that indeed a Similo can handle sparse Jacobian matrices. So in this video, I want to go over the 1D diffusion problem again and just show you how to implement it. And rather than building the whole thing from scratch again, uh, what I'm going to do is I already have the code written. I'm just going to walk you through it since we already have videos on, on the whole process and just show you the little tweaks to the code uh, we need to make to implement, um, implement these um, sparse sparse Jacobian matrices. So let's just jump into it. So here we are in our notebook that we use for the diffusion problem, one dimensional again. We are looking at this partial differential equation here. And in our original uh, problem, we had set the boundary conditions to be Dirichlet boundary conditions at um, time equal to zero. At one boundary, the temperature was zero, and at the other boundary, it was 30, and all the other uh, interior points were 20 degrees. So the way we approached this problem was to discretize it. So we broke up our continuous line into a series of n points, and then for each point, what we did is we wrote uh, using a finite difference method here, we wrote a series of ordinary differential equations at each grid point um, to approximate our partial differential equation. So we have an ordinary differential equation here, and um, our partial derivatives are approximated by this difference formula, formula with the two boundary conditions being here, t, equal, t at 0 is equal to 0, and t at our last boundary point, n is equal to 30. Um, these are the imports we used here, so let me run that. And then we solved the problem with a loop here. So what we did is to generate that system of equations, where is it down here? We used a for loop basically to generate all those equations. And then we use our uh, similar differential equation solver to solve it. So let me run this code here and run this here and see how long it takes to run. Um, so it was a little over a second. Let me see how many grid points we had here. We had 101, so that's not too bad. Then we moved on to a slightly more realistic formula, formalization of it. So what we did instead of doing a loop, which is slow in Python, is we used NumPy's sparse matrix library. So we wrote our system of equations here in this matrix form. And you can see that we have zeros. Uh, most, of the, um, most of the entries in this matrix are zeros, except for the main diagonal and the two diagonals above and below it. So we came down here and we did the same thing. Where is the code? Uh, here is the actual matrix equation. And here is where we define that sparse matrix. So this could even be done more efficiently since um, the solver calls, calls this equation at every step and we're defining this matrix. We could define it outside and speed it up even more, but this is uh, good enough for demonstration purposes. So we run it, we run it, and our elapsed time is 1.2 seconds. So we did not really get much of an improvement there. This should probably be a little faster. Let me rerun it. 0.8 seconds. So, you know, it's a little faster, but it's not the best. So, I had said that a similar cannot handle um, sparse Jacobian matrices, and that is not exactly correct. So, down here with sparse Jacobian, I basically rewritten the system here, and the key to this is setting, where is it here, the linear solver to a sparse matrix solver here and then setting our Jacobian function here 
to self.jack. So come, we come down here. We have the definition of the Jacobian matrix down here. We have set the solver to sparse. So let's run this code and then run it again. And we have 0.1 seconds. So we got this big, big speed up in, we got this big in increase in performance. So that is about it. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that you can indeed do sparse matrices with the Assimilo package. So this is indeed a very useful, useful thing.